solid enough for sinking deep foundations to support tall buildings. Without this bedrock, New York could not have been built so high. The one part of the skyline that dips is the one place where the ice sheet deposited loose sand and gravel. No good for building towering skyscrapers. Ice has bulldozed and carved the world we know on a colossal scale. But what is it that gives something as brittle as ice supremacy over the hardest and most resilient rocks to be found on the planet? To find out, you need to see inside a glacier. The Svartisen Glacier in Norway is one of the few places on Earth where ice can really be seen in action. It's thanks to this glacier that scientists are starting to understand the secrets of ice's great power. Deep beneath the glacier, in a chamber at the end, scientists come face to face with ice. Then it's two days of hard work using hot water to melt a cave big enough to get inside the glacier and see it in all its glory. Here's the ice tunnel, watch your head. Miriam Jackson's a glaciologist. She spends up to three weeks at a time down here. Look at that. It's beautiful. It's amazing, isn't it? It's absolutely beautiful. This is like a piece of art. This is, it is, isn't it? Wow. You've got to remember there's 200 metres of ice over us now. 200 metres? Yes. We're at the so, bottom of the glacier and the ice is over us. It's also closing in on us. As we speak, it's, it's contracting in, aren't it? Yeah. If we couldn't stand here for 48 hours, the ice would close in on us. We'd be stuck <laughs> fossilised in the ice, like a big ice cube. It's down here, right at the very bottom of the glacier, you can see how it carves out great landscapes and can slice through solid rock. It's not the ice itself that does all the damage. It's the debris that it picks up along the way that makes glaciers act like giant sandpaper. In effect, the ice uses the rock against itself. But the ice cave has another surprise. Have you seen this? It's an air bubble, is it? It's not an air bubble, this is water. Oh, the, here. look at that. So this is, we opened this up when we were, when we were melting. <laughs> but before then, it was totally enclosed in the ice. These water pockets apparently make the ice less brittle, so it can bend around obstacles in the landscape. A glacier is not the solid mass that it first appears. Seeing it from the inside has given me a completely different perspective. It seems almost alive. As if to prove the point, the ice invades the space we've left behind. In just three days, our magical ice cave disappears. From space, you can really see how fluid ice is. On the west coast of Greenland, glaciers flow around the contours of a landscape hidden beneath the ice. A false colour image reveals the blue ice of the Malaspina Glacier in Alaska. It flows through a gap in the mountains and spreads out like syrup for more than 30 miles. This is part of the Lambert Glacier in Antarctica. It's one of the longest glaciers on Earth. You can follow its flow lines as it bends and twists on its slow motion descent. 
Ice is soft and bendy, yet it's also powerful enough to destroy almost everything in its path. But while glaciers usually take tens of thousands of years to sculpt a landscape, occasionally they can trigger a devastating change that happens in just a few hours. You can see the aftermath of one such event in the northwest corner of the United States. It's a land of gorges, canyons and barren rock, covering thousands of square miles. It's known as the Scablands. Vic Baker is a geologist who spent 40 years trying to discover exactly what took place here. The landscape creates this impression of something fantastic that happened. And as you drive through it, you can have a sense that you're following the path of that uh, great catastrophe. Around 16,000 years ago, a giant lake formed, Lake Missoula, that was held back by nothing more than a wall of ice, a part of what's known as the Cordilleran Ice Sheet. Behind me would be the uh, ice dam that was holding in glacial Lake Missoula and it was holding back a phenomenal amount of water. As the huge mass of water built up behind the dam year after year, the dam began to weaken. Until the ice gave way in a catastrophic failure. a mass of water larger than Lakes Erie and Ontario combined. The force of water rushing forward was like releasing a bomb. It generated a shock wave of air. First thing, you'd see dust and wind, and you feel rumbling. An enormous flood quickly followed. Lake Missoula's water had begun a fast and furious journey across the American continent. It would be moving very fast. We're driving at uh, just about the same speed as the water. It would have torn through the landscape with the energy equivalent of 60 Amazon rivers. it would have ripped up everything in its path. You can imagine water uh, 100 meters above your head, all dark, filled with sediment and all kinds of debris, large rocks, trees, woolly mammoths, anything. I think it would be absolutely terrifying. The water cut into the land up to 650 feet deep, excavating billions of tons of solid rock. It would probably be described as a kind of giant monster. In just days, it smashed a path from source to ocean for hundreds of miles. leaving behind a colossal canyon. And when the 